Okay, I've had a lot of questions about booties and sizes from adults to newborns to start prepping for making Christmas gifts and everything. And so what I've done is I've gone in and made sample sizes, which you might want to do this if you're making Christmas gifts because the, the boot should fit like a glove pretty much on the foot. And I've made all the way from newborn up to an adult size women's 10 to 12. And I'm wearing the sizes 7 to 9. And as you can see, the e-wrap area is your sole. So if you were looking at this, this is your sole. And that's going to be the width of the, the foot and also the length. If you have a narrower foot, then you would do lush rows. And then, as you can see, the pearled part, which is this part right here, is where you start the top of the actual boot. But if you don't want that much, you start to use less of the pearl and start with your toss-over knit a little sooner. It's up to you. You can adjust this any way you want. This is just giving you a general size. Mostly what's important to what you'll figure out um, about these patterns is the base, which will give you the sole, and you can kind of go from there. And how my sizes are going to run, and I'm going to put the diagram on my section below in my blog, so you'll go down there. And this is strictly for straight looms, using the divider. And for the babies, I use the pink loom with the dividers, and then I go up to children's and use the yellow loom. And you typically go up to using the green loom for the adult sizes. But when I got my green loom, um, one of the pegs busted and I wasn't able to replace it, so I just usually go up to my blue loom. But all these are used with dividers, and you would end up using all of them for sizing. Now, You'll notice that when you start looking at the diagram that there's kind of a pattern that develops an increase in the sole and an increase in the purling and an increase in the ankle area. And so you can take out the ankle area. That's when you start the purling and you can go ahead and cast off if you don't want the ankle area. And you can start the toss over knit earlier on the base if you don't want so much. You can do the ankle pattern which I've had and you've seen in my past videos with the uh, white soles and the red. You just don't add you just don't add this top bit. So that's generally what it looks like on for an adult. And it doesn't it doesn't change in size much when it comes to the children's. And so I'll give you the exact sizes. I went and printed up the diagrams and everything. And so I'll give you the exact sizes of what you're making on my blog. And what I'll do is I'm going to give you the newborn pattern, how it writes out completely. And then um, what you'll get for the different sizes is a shorthand. And that's what you'll find. So I think that's it. And I'm going to show you how to make this. So I've had some questions on not being able to see quite as well what I was doing. I'm pretty sure I showed decreases in this, showing you how to make this pattern. It's a very basic pattern. And so I'll show you the decrease, and that should clear up a few things. All right, hopefully this will be helpful, and let's get started. Here's some supplies. You'll need your loom, and go ahead and set your divider in place. And this is the booty. We're going to start with the sole move to the um, top of the boot. You'll need a crafter needle, looming hook, crochet hook, and scissors, and a skein of yarn. You can either take two skeins of yarn or you can do one where you're pulling from the center and you're pulling from the outside of it. So let's get started. You want to e-wrap all the way around on a cast on.
push the loops down and e-wrap all pegs again. You're going to work circularly through the whole garment. Toss over the loop. And you want to do two more rows of e-wrap. And then after you do that, you'll want to start purling. And you'll want to purl two rows. So you take and pull the loop, pull the yarn up through the bottom of the loop, pull the loop off and put what you just made on. And you want to do that all the way around. You want to do that for two rows. and do one more row. After you've done that, you're going to do the knit and you're going to do it for two straight rows. Okay, after you do that one more row, then what you want to do is you want to move your divider in, and I'll show you how to do this. You're going to pop it out, and you see the next two holes? You want to move the divider into the next two holes and pop it back in. And now that you've moved it, now it's going to be easier to go ahead and decrease each loop on the sides of the divider onto the next peg. Move that one over and then you want to move that one over. And now you've just done a decrease and now you don't have to worry about it. You can just knit the row. So go ahead and knit the row. We're going to decrease again, so pop the divider out and move it to the next set of holes. I usually like to hold the top of the divider so that that loop doesn't come off. Go ahead and decrease, move that one to the next peg, and move the other one to the next peg. There's your decrease. And now you can straighten it the row again. And you want to repeat this process of moving your divider over and decreasing and then knitting a row until you're down to a total of 12 pegs. Let's go ahead and move that one over to decrease that and the other one over to decrease that and just do a straight knit and repeat this until you're down to a total of 12 pegs. When you're done and down to 12 pegs, go ahead and just knit one straight row. Now you want to purl two rows. Remember taking the yarn from up underneath the loop, pulling it through, 
pulling the previous loop off and putting your new loop on. And purl all the way around for two rows. And do you another row. Once you're done with that, you're going to cast off with your crochet hook. So put that loop on there and then wrap around your crochet hook, pull that through, and then put your next loop on. And you want to pull through that back loop, wrap, and pull through. And you want to go to the next peg and take that loop off. And you want to repeat the pull through, wrap, and pull through all the way around until you're done. Okay, pull out the garment, and what you want to do is, uh, after you pull that last one through, you want to put it through a previous loop to connect it, pull through, and then wrap the crochet hook again, and pull through. And now you can snip your end and pull it the rest of the way through. Next, you want to thread your needle and you want to sew up the bottom of the boot. You can either choose to do what I've done in the past, tighten the cast on, or you don't have to. You can just sew it up as is. For this video, I'm going to just skip the tighten up part and you can just sew it up as is. And tie off your end. And now you want to tuck all your ends in with your crochet hook. So this is easy. You can just take that, wrap it. Tuck it into the inside of the shoe. And then you want to take and start tucking the end at the top into the upper part of the shoe with the crochet hook. And every few loops you want to stretch it so that you know where it's going to try to pull out the ends that will pull out so that it doesn't do that after you start wearing. Okay, well if you're done, here's what your boot should look like. And you want to make two. And there is the basic booty and go to the blog to get the rest.